years ago. Yeah. There's no such thing as a fish. Yeah, there's no such thing as a fish. No, seriously, it's in the Oxford Dictionary of Underwater Life. It says it right there, first paragraph, no such thing as a fish. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the British Library. Please welcome to the stage, no such thing as a fish! Yeah. Oh, wow. Yay. Wow. Hiya. Hi, everyone. Woo! Wow. Let's do it. Very cool. What Thank an intro. You. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to bring it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you've had your high point. <laughs> Guys, this is a oh, library. Shh. <laughs> 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 Thanks so much, everyone, for coming. We're so excited. How many of you have been to a fish gig before, out of curiosity? Wow. Nice. How, oh, so how many of you are club fish members? Ooh. Oh, it's a secret cult, everyone else. Uh, it's a very special We'll cult. see you in the caves after the gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should also say, by the way, so uh, thank you all for coming here, being in the room with us. Very exciting. But also, uh, over there, we've got you at home. We're live streaming this. So, hey. hello, world. If um, you're at home and you've seen fish before, put your hand up. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Woo. That's huge. I'd put nice. some clothes back on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amazing. We should say what we're here as part of. So this yeah. is the uh, the British Library's Animals Exhibition, which opened, I think, today or yesterday, and uh, it's running until August. So if you in the room or you at home haven't seen it yet, check it out. It's a brilliant exhibition. It's about it's about the science of animals, the art, their discovery, animals which were or weren't believed in and then did or didn't turn out to be real. It's really good. So yeah, highly recommended. Awesome. Yeah, and so what we're going to do today is we're going to record effectively a, a British Library special uh, for, and it's going to go out. So you You've, you've paid for a free thing um, that, that will go out, <laughs> and it'll be edited and much better. So it's <laughs> you're paying for the shit bits, basically. Yeah. Um, Anna's uh, Anna's very quiet today. <laughs> yeah, she's. I love. I've been given two wine glasses for some reason. <laughs> I feel like it's the Chazinski Memorial mm. glass. She's not dead. She's, she's got to start saying memorial. Sorry. Every time. Sorry. She's <laughs> very alive. Um, yeah, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the show. We'll do, a, we'll do an, a recording of the app. And then afterwards, we've got uh, some time that and we've never really actually done this before. We're going to do a Q&A. So if anyone has facts or questions, uh, you can ask them. There's microphones roaming around here. If you're watching at home, uh, if you want to get on Twitter and go to at no such thing, if you have a fact or a, or a question, I think that's probably the best way. Or James, yeah. do you... James got a burner phone. Yeah, I got a burner phone. I got <laughs> loads of questions here. So, um, right. yeah. Do you know the number off the top of your head that we can tell? Um, the... I can find it. <laughs> uh, yes, it is 077-899-63721. And if you're outside the UK, 0044. Yeah. Uh, tax cost, four pounds <laughs> a... Uh, <laughs> A word. So, okay, why don't we, why don't we uh, introduce our guest? Oh, yeah. We're so excited to have our guest on tonight. We, uh, this, this person is obviously one of the greats of British comedy, but on top of that, someone who clearly was meant to be a QI elf, hopefully is going to abandon her career to become a QI elf <laughs> one day. You'll know her from literally every great comedy in the UK. Please put your hands together for Sally Phillips. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much. Hi, Sally. Genuinely very excited to be here. Thank you very much. Oh, we're so Getting excited. to be an elf, finally. This is, a, this is an interview, Sally. Yeah. 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 I'm aware. That's why I'm wearing my <laughs> interview suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so uh, you will also. We should just quickly say uh, that you'll notice we have lots of notes in front of us. These, this is not a script. We have not prepped anything. But the way that fish works generally is we send each other a headline fact, and we all go away and we research it. But we have these notes just to make sure that we get the dates and names right. So if you see us reading it, it's it's the, we haven't told each other anything outside of the headline facts. Just worth knowing that. 
okay. Um, I scripted well, that that's, way better. That's and basically that all the questions answered. Then, <laughs> so. <laughs> so should we do it? Should we go for it? Let's do it. Okay. All right. Uh, Ling, if you could roll theme tune, please. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of No Such Thing as a Fish, a weekly podcast this week coming to you live from the British Library. <laughs> My name is Dan Schreiber. I am sitting here with James Harkin, Andrew Hunter Murray, and Sally Phillips. And once again, we, yes, and once again, we have gathered around the microphones with our four favorite facts from the last seven days. And in no particular order, here we go. Starting with fact number one, and that is my fact. My fact this week is that the British Library's Fantastic Beasts collection originally included accounts of a nine foot dragon terrorizing Essex <laughs> and an army of horses that teleported to rural Wales. <laughs> and it was donated by the founder of the British Museum, Sir Hans Sloan. Wow. So he was a nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah. The, what do you mean the account was donated? Yeah, well, so here's the thing, right? He's uh, Hans Sloan, if you don't know who he is, he was one of the founders of the British Museum, an incredible guy. If you've ever been to London, Sloan Square, that's named after him, or Hans Crescent, as we Famous Hans <laughs> Crescent. Um, <laughs> that's if you go online, that's what it says, isn't it? All the time it's like the two famous places in London that are named after him, Sloan Square, which we do all know. Yep. Yeah. And then this weird Crescent. Hans Crescent. Crescent. It's an upcoming Richard Curtis film, I think. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> going to be huge. But yeah, so um, he was an amazing guy. He was a doctor. And on top of being a doctor, he was obsessed with collecting. He collected everything. And that's what became the basis of the British Museum's collection. He was a hoarder. He was a hoarder, yeah. 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 I mean, he was a serious hoarder. He yeah. had, he had like a separate apartment to hoard in uh, because <laughs> it got too much on his own. Um, yeah, and he... And how did he die? Did it all collapse on him? Yes, <laughs> exactly. A museum pillar took him out. Um, no, he, um, he was quite old, I think, when he died. I think he, he was, was in his 90s. He was 93. 93. Yeah. Wow. Is this... The bringer of chocolate, the man I know is the bringer of the hot, of hot, the hot chocolate to the United Kingdom. Controversial. Controversial. Yeah. Is he? He was, um, yes. and I think he kind of Teleporting horses and <laughs> hot chocolate. <laughs> yes. yeah. Strong epitaph. Yeah, I think, I think it's been claimed that uh, that was uh, something he nicked. It was ready <gasps> in place. Yeah, I think uh. he was in Jamaica, maybe. He was in Jamaica. Oh. Yeah. 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 Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then it was a practice they sort of grated cocoa with milk and, and yeah. cinnamon and stuff. But I think okay. he probably... Sorry to shit on him in his own home, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> 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 well, the teleporting horse is better anyway. It's way better, isn't it? Yeah, so this is what I was about to say was, is, yeah. uh, you know, these, all the collections that got handed over after he passed away in his will to be the basis of the British Museum's collection mm -hmm. eventually became the British Library's collection as well. And there was lots of papers, there was lots of physical objects, and a part of it was a collection of things called strange news. Mm -hmm. He was obsessed Ooh. with strange news, stories yeah. that would come out from France and Scotland and Wales of odd things that, you know, like... Um, uh, well, like dragons. Like or dragons, like, um, yeah. Appearing horses in the it middle of the It was the artifact version of No Such Thing as a Fish. Yes, yes. exactly. Well, he's the, yeah, he's the old me, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. you have fewer links to the slave trade, we should say, Dan. <laughs> Just, uh, fewer. Thank fewer. Um, yeah, so this um, this big dragon that arrived in Essex, um, it was um, in a place called Henham, which is just north of Stansted. It's about two okay. miles north of Stansted. Wow. And so what I like to imagine is actually there was like a, a time travel portal that came in and it was actually an easy jet flight coming <laughs> in. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. But there's loads of other things that he, he claimed. And the thing is, he went out to collect things from around the world. But the reason he did that is because he thought it would help people to better understand God's design of the world. Mm. And so when he was finding this strange news, a lot of things he didn't believe in, but there were some things that he did. So he found um, a story from France where fist-sized hailstones came down and kind of battered everything and hurt a lot of people and killed a lot of crops. But the only thing that was saved was a Protestant church. Yeah. And he thought that this was proof that, you know, God was saving them. Yeah, this, this one's amazing. There was a story, <laughs> this is from Scotland, um, and there was a guy who died, 
and he was in his home. They w laid him to in state. Is it in state? What is it? When you lay someone? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So he's uh, laid in the house. He's in a yeah. coffin for people to come and see. Oh, like an open wake, coffin. Like a wake. Yeah. Yeah. A state is pretty fancy. It's pretty <laughs> queenish, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's um, yeah. 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 You just said this guy. Was this <laughs> well, the this king is of thing. Scotland? No, no, no. How, was how long was the queue? Is what we're asking. Yeah, yeah. It was just a guy. And um, <laughs> it was a town of Dumfries. Okay, oh, yeah. Dumfries, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So apparently, people went to visit him, and then it came the time where, okay, let's bury him now. And they tried to lift him, and no one could lift him. He was really heavy. They just they tried everything. So they brought cattle in, and they tied ropes around him and tried to pull him, oh. and he didn't move. And then the house burnt down, and oh. he remained as the only thing that was still there. Wow. He's like Arthur's, you know, came the sword in the stone. He's he's the, the guy in the house. Yeah, the corpse <laughs> in the house. Yeah. Sorry, so he, he he collected this story, but he didn't collect the guy. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you can't collect the, the guy, guy. Is the <laughs> point of the story? <laughs> <laughs> so he had strict. Th were these kept in diary form or like what kind no, of no. evidence? No, so no. The, so these these were like weird pamphlets that used to get produced, and so people right. would go and buy them on the street, and it would just yeah. say strange news from Scotland, and they right. they weren't one particular he magazine. Them. So yeah, no, he collected them. He so collected when he died, oh. he donated them to the British Museum. Right, well, right. to yeah, his museum. But I mean, he's uh, this, he's sixteen sixty, is it? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. It's really early. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We sh we should say that uh, none of I know we don't, we don't need to say it. None of the stuff is true that we're describing. As in, <laughs> we keep we keep saying apparently, <laughs> and then yeah. describing things which people thought it was. Some people thought it was yeah, true. Yeah, uh, that's true. I'm just saying, if in like four hundred years they're discussing a copy of the Daily Star. And saying, <laughs> apparently, there was a... There is <laughs> an infinitely heavy man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember that headline. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I actually, weirdly, I found a star headline in the course of... Because I was researching things which don't... Crypt cryptozoology, animals which are not proven to exist. Yes. Uh, and there was a headline in the Daily Star in 2008. Loch Ness Monster dies aged three million. <laughs> 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 that's a shame. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh, yeah. that's completely Global brilliant. warming, very sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's interesting, the whole thing of fictional fictional creatures, isn't it? Cryptids. D I did Italian. Dante, there were a lot of fictional creatures. The phoenixes in, in Dante. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Et only incense and cardamom pod pods in Ca heaven. Cardamom pods. What's that? It's that it bit of a curry that you see and you're like, oh, <laughs> they've left it in. Oh, wow. And no, that's it's the in thing in the, in, the yeah. in the jazz version of a cinnamon bun. Right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are three types of phoenixes, three types of, of yetis. Yeah, you found a yeti that I've never heard of, which yeah. is, what was it called? It was, uh, um, yeah, there's three types. The Nyalmo, which is black, has black fur and is the largest and the fiercest, which is 15 foot tall. Mm. The Chuti, which is eight feet tall and lives 8,000 to 10,000 feet above sea level. Mm. And the Rangshimbombo, <laughs> <laughs> which is only three to five feet tall. And I think must have been just the mistaken it's an orangutan or uh, some kind of baboon. Yeah. <laughs> well, we I mean, the, the first, one, out, the first one sounds like a gorilla. Rangshimbombo, yeah, it does, it does a bit. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The, the, the first one you're describing oh, the first is the black fur, sounds like quite black tall. Fur the largest yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. The, the abominable snowman. I mean, there, there was a uh, uh, they 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 had the um, they had some fur, didn't they? That they kept they various times over history. They would analyze the DNA of, yeah, and occasionally yeah. find it to be a horse or yeah, or <laughs> a or a bear <laughs> or a. But they now think it is a kind of bear hybrid thing, don't they? Mm. Really? Oh, do they? I think uh, so. That's interesting. Yeah, a you blue, blue th Tibetan blue bear. Oh yeah. Mixed yes, that's what it's often kind of bear, mistaken yeah. for. Yeah. Also, oh, okay. um, I'd, I've, I've studied this a lot, actually, Sally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'm trying to find the thing you haven't studied a lot. <laughs> I've, I've that's everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we've hit on the one thing I've studied. <laughs> this is a dream come true. But um, Brian Blessed, who is a very... Um, Yeti. <laughs> yes, <it. laughs> well, that's what he would say. He would go for the Yeti, looking for the Yeti, and then the locals that he would meet in the Himalayas would say, oh, it's a Yeti. And he realized that a it's lot of... What, well, all the stories are him? It's him. <laughs> it's <a> <laughs> when, what, when he it was, was like three foot man. tall, it was when yeah. he was a child. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I read about uh, quite recently in Nepal, they had like these, um, I think they were models or badges or some kind of publicity of the, of the Yeti. And they sent them out and then all the locals were like, well, the Yeti looks nothing like that. What are you doing? And oh the really? thing is, the person who did Sorry, it said... Sorry, I'm lost. You said they had models of badges, which they did sent Did I say out. badges? Yes. <laughs> I meant badges. 
Oh, badges. So yeah. they were doing a sort of Yeti awareness yeah, we- campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sort so of a, <laughs> but a genuinely, yeah, yeah. what was the? Well, the problem was they said that they said the, pe- the locals said that it looked a bit like a sumo wrestler as opposed to a okay. Yeti because it didn't have any fur on. And the guy oh, who did yeah. it said, well, no one knows what it looks like anyway, so that's one thing. And number two, fur is actually really difficult to draw. <laughs> <laughs> and three, right. I just drew the sumo wrestler <laughs> and no one wanted to buy it, so <laughs> wow. Oh, that's that's very really, um, really just funny. On, uh, w- so King Kong, for example, yeah. not a cryptid, I know a fictional <laughs> character. <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah, a crowbar is what you're attempting. No, <laughs> we're talking about large, hairy okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fa- fellas. Sorry. And King Kong is, is all of these three things. Um, but King Kong was originally based on a lizard. Was um, it? Yeah. Oh, well, oh. Godzilla, no. Uh, no, Godzilla that's is th- oh. So I think Godzilla's a bit later. K- King Kong was based on the Komodo dragon. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? There was a f- so the filmmaker behind King Kong was uh, Marion Marion C. Cooper, and he was friends with an explorer called William Burden, who had had got permission to collect some Komodo dragons from the Dutch East Indies, yeah. as they were then, now Indonesia. Mm. And um, until 1910, nobody nobody from the West had seen a Komodo dragon, so they were cryptids. They weren't believed oh. in. They had not been yeah. sighted, spotted, hunted, brought back. There were no specimens. And uh, one was brought back by William Burden to the USA. And in the course of the expedition, his wife was nearly eaten by, eaten by a Komodo dragon. What? Right. Really? And, and yeah, she, she wow. was, she'd finished a sort of setting a, a, you know, a photography, you know, like a photo trap up or something for it. Yeah, yeah. And was going back and came face to face with one and, you know, had a lucky escape. Wow. And so that image of this kind of glamorous woman faced with a, a terrifying beast, when William mm. Burden brought back the sample that he got of a Komodo dragon... Mary and C. Cooper saw it and thought, what if it was a monkey? And that, and that, <laughs> and that, I mean, because gorillas were also new in the USA at the yeah. time. Yeah, no okay, one in the right. USA saw yeah. a gorilla until I think 1910. Th- that oh as wow. in the first, it was like, actual physical gorilla was brought over. They'd yeah, heard yeah. about them, but I mean, that's quite late, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Feels yeah. Feels like it. How old was, how old was his wife? Oh, I don't know. Because there is a thing when you sort of hit menopause, your, your maternal instinct goes really. <laughs> Into overdrive, and you start wanting to mother. Thing. A There's Komodo a lot of women dragon? run away from their <laughs> husbands and <laughs> mother primates, and yeah, I can see that happening. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of women get into trouble that way. <laughs> <laughs> didn't like. Who's the Elsa the lion? Did you get? Didn't she eat? Uh, what's her face? Who's born sorry? free. Who born free woman? What's her name? Oh, oh. Sigourney <laughs> Weaver's wrong. <laughs> Does anyone know? Uh, Joy, didn't she Joy get Adams. eaten by the lion in the end? Joy Adamson. No, I feel. Uh, like, I feel. Is like that a dream <laughs> I've had? <laughs> Did you stop the movie <laughs> just before? Uh, I'll tell you a fact that is true, though. <laughs> a perfect. You've been taking lessons from Dan in the <laughs> segue. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know that this is true. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to. I'm going to tell you a muck fact, which you can check later. Ooh, that's I a great think term. Yeah. A okay. muck fact. You know, there used to be a thing at McDonald's. You know, nutrition. McDonald's nutrition muck facts. <laughs> <laughs> which I used to love. <laughs> yeah, it's like a fact, but a muck fact. Um, <laughs> Jane Goodall's son, she did chimpanzees, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's she, right. She had a son, and she used to keep him in a cage <gasps> to protect him from the chimpanzees, which were aggressive. Oh. Oh. And guess what he does now for a job? A prison warden. Shark photographer. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shark cameraman, yeah. He oh just yeah. wants to be back in the cage. Wow. Well, I don't he know. He feels I'd safe. It's I a safe place. I would love to interview him. Yeah. That is incredible. Isn't it? What a let's see. Let's check it's true. By the way, <laughs> I'm pretty. I've definitely been told that in uh, a pub by someone who, who might know. I got a doll of Jane Goodall. It's like a Barbie doll of Jane Goodall, right? Really? Yeah. And That's for my so daughter. weird. Oh, Is for your daughter. What? <laughs> what's? What are the? Does it have accessories? Yeah, it has a little David Grey beard, which is the name of the chimpanzee yeah. okay. who she mm-hmm. likes to ask. Got about. a little boy in a cage. <laughs> 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 but the <laughs> thing is, like, I know Dan collects a lot of celebrity, you know, yeah. memorabilia, and almost all the people end up, you know, celebrities. They end up getting in trouble for something. I thought I was safe with Jane Goodall. Yeah. I thought there's no way that she could get cancelled. Ch- well, let's start it tonight. No, she's not. <laughs> 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 What yeah. has she done? What's, what's she kept her son in the cage. Okay. Well, you no, know, we so all didn't keep our kids <laughs> in. <laughs> so he didn't get killed by aggressive chimpanzees. Yeah, what is a cot but a, a weak cage? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a ca- yeah. cage Thank without you. a top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sunroof yeah. cage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Jail. Well, you know, the, I mean, animals and, and show business is yeah. a marriage made in hell. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. I, do, I remember meeting, a, we had an animal agent who came on to smack the pony quite a lot. Ja oh yeah. Jackie, she had quite a lot of, uh, represented a lot of animals that would come occasionally with need. <laughs> and she had a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig on her business card. I went, oh, he's so cute. You know, perimenopause starting, so <laughs> cute. And um, do you still have him? She went, no, he weren't bringing in any work, so we ate him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hope she said that in earshot of all the other animals. <laughs> <laughs> you better do yeah. your job. Yeah, it was terrible. Terrible, terrible. Apparently the hardest animals to train are owls. They just don't get it, apparently. <laughs> so they they say, it's really interesting, isn't it? You'd think that an owl would be smart, but yeah. no, dumb. <laughs> Cannot repeat. Uh, really? the ravens are the dogs of the, of the... Have you worked with an owl? No, I haven't. I was just I'm obviously fascinated by animal agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, actually, Hard, the owl hardest ones to train an owl, supposedly. Ravens are the dogs of the sky. Penguins are aggressive, bit of a nightmare. <laughs> um, and they have explosive poo. Do you know this? Who? Ravens? Uh, penguins. Poo, poo penguins. explodes. Ah. So very difficult to Well, pick no, no, up. no, no. As in, you mean um, the poo shoots out. Shoots it doesn't, it doesn't, they don't <laughs> lay it and then it just... <laughs> Explodes. <laughs> Imagine if dogs did that. Yeah. Every time you'd be walking through the park, it'd be like walking through World War One, wouldn't it? It'd be like the you end of Black Adam. Don't take your foot off it. Don't take your foot off it. Yeah. They have lots of animals, obviously playing each part. The um, the kestrel in Kes was played. Do you know this? You pretty no. played by three different kestrels no. called Freeman, Hardy, and Willis after the <laughs> after the shoe shop. No, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I presented the Palm Dog Award for best <laughs> came out. <laughs> the Palm Dog. The Palm Dog. If there is, you know, in Cannes, the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, yeah. Some British journalists, 22 years ago now, set up the Palm Dog rather than the Palm Door for the best canine performance. And I was lucky enough <laughs> <laughs> to present the award with Ronnie Ancona to Quentin Tarantino on behalf of the dog in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, oh so it's played so. by three three dogs, two <laughs> male dogs and one Crosby female stills dog. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so the dogs don't get to come to the ceremony, or well, they didn't. The, the dog didn't come to the. No, they found a, a similar breed and they brought that dog in. The dog didn't know what was happening. Oh God, they well, ate, Quentin, they ate Quentin the first dog, didn't they? <laughs> Quentin urinated on the carpet. <laughs> 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 it was it was fine, but yeah, yeah. So you so you have you have wow. several. And they use different animals. F uh, so they he was saying Quent my Quentin, <laughs> um, <laughs> Quent Quenty Quint Tar. <laughs> <laughs> Tino. <laughs> my, yeah, my brother tried to license his image to put on lunch boxes. I don't know why. But anyway, <laughs> well, hang well, on, we need to. We but need he to said they had three <laughs> different dogs. <laughs> And they uh, and one girl and two boys. And on the day, he thought the two male dogs were better, but then turned out the female dog was actually. When he got into the edit, he realised she was a much better Did actress. Right. Do they do three? Do they do a take with each of the dogs? No, no, they just use because they have uh, limited hours. Animals oh, can only do like no, they're all can do three of them in one dog costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. can we your get back brother to your brother? Tried yeah. to. <laughs> Um, tried to license Quentin Tarantino's image, image, famously a man who makes 18 certificate films yes, for lunchboxes. Children's lunch, lunch right. boxes. What was he thinking, the market? I, d I, d I didn't ask. It was only like a long time <laughs> after he told me that that I realised that that was mad. <laughs> oh, so it wasn't. Yeah, okay. It <laughs> One was of those things that, you know, he says in passing. Was it this, on the day? That. Was it. So Tarantino's <laughs> up there. He's accepting it's an like award a brand, as a you dog. Know that image You're of him. There's, you know, the image. No, I get that bit. But like the Che Guevara Tarantino picture. I think they were putting that on stuff. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Is that a famous picture, the Che Guevara Tarantino? But do you know the one I mean, though? No. I, don't you? Okay. So I feel like there's a very sort of known. I think you're too far into your brother's world with the lunchboxes <laughs> there. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, Dan knows everything about Yeti. He's <laughs> nothing about anything else. <laughs> Do you know, uh, just, just going back to mytholo uh, mythological creatures a second, mm. the, um, you, speaking of penguins exploding um, poo out their bums, there's a mythological creature called... Smooth, by the way, smooth. Thank you. <laughs> there's a thing called the Bonnican. Have you heard of the Bonnican? Bonnican's no. like a, it's, it's like this beast which is like a half horse, it's got curved horns, and the way that it would, if it was being hunted by humans, the way that it would deter the humans is to fire poisonous shit out of its bum, right? But wow. it, can, it can make a distance, and this is what's most impressive about this thing that doesn't exist, um, <laughs> Thank you. is it can shoot at three acres. 
<laughs> that's great. That's, that's um, a unit of area. Uh, area, not distance, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So does he cover the entire, like, one and a half football pitch? Yeah, I, think I, I think it does cover three. I re <laughs> um, I've also read about the Bonacon. Actually, interestingly, Brian Blessed yeah. told me. He could do that. He could do that. He can do that. Yeah, when yeah. he was on Everest, he Four said. Four acres. Yeah. He, he said when you, he said he had a bout of diarrhea on Everest and the poo shot out and it he said that his thing he often says is don't camp under the french because the fuckers <laughs> will shit on you it that's that's Crikey. his like that's a, like a t-shirt quote from him but again who's buying these obscene <laughs> t-shirts and lunch boxes <laughs> yeah i need to meet your brother actually <laughs> <laughs> um no so anyway the bonnekin the bonnekin is a um is a terrifying creature with three acre uh, poisonous poo yeah. shoots. And everyone that's depicted trying to hunt it all faces the other way, basically facing as as ready to run mm. because they want to escape the, uh, yeah. the firing poisonous line. Poisonous poo. Yeah. Oh, it's like fighting Medusa. Have you come across, I'm sure you have, the um, fictitious creatures of lumberjack culture? No. <laughs> no. no. That sounds amazing. No. <laughs> Guys, settle in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are a number of books about fear called things like Fearsome Critters, about fictional creatures in lumberjack lore. Yep. And they're things like, um, well, my favorite one, let me look at my favorite one. It's, uh, well, there's a splinter cat, it's a regular cat, but with no logic, <laughs> <laughs> who's an indiscriminate destroyer of hollow trees, which was their explanation for, um, for, for lightning strikes. Oh. But there oh. is a, um, yeah, there's one, uh, a well, there's Gumbaroo, it's an Australian one. I can't, I can't find my notes on one. Are they kind of made, up, they kind of made up for fun? Or no, or to explain a, well, there was things. one that's... Um, I can't... Gosh, I'm sorry, I haven't got the thing. But there was one that was... Uh, that uh, the lumberjack hunter that okay. hides behind trees so you can't see it, but um, can only be deterred by loads of alcohol. So right. <laughs> the lumberjacks must be drunk <laughs> <laughs> to keep safe. That's good. That's kind of fun. That's good logic. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to move on. We've, we've run way over. Oh, um, no. Yeah. Um, should we move on or do you want one more no, thing? No, give us one more, yeah. Uh, okay, well, I was reading um, some stuff by Alien, um, the Roman writer and orator. What? Um, alien. A alien. Alien. Oh, alien. I'm going to call him Alien. Alien. Yeah, alien. Yeah. Alien. Yeah, yeah. alien. Um, and he's got loads of amazing creatures. Um, he has the Buprestis, which he believed existed, which is a creature which, if swallowed by a cow, causes the cow to swell and burst. Okay. Yeah. Um, he had wow. a smooth lobster uh, where if you saw it on the beach and then you marked where it was and you drove it to anywhere in the world, when you got back to where it was, it would be back there. Whoa! You That's sure it wasn't great. teleporting? <laughs> Good one, yeah. And he said also that um, if a snake is eating something that's a little bit too big for it to swallow, and it kind of gets it into the mouth and can't go any further, it will stand straight <laughs> on its <laughs> tail <laughs> and jiggle itself so <laughs> the food will go down into his stomach. Amazing. <laughs> Have you seen so those sweet. videos of people hunting anacondas? No. No. Is it anacondas or is it just a those python? Those are the big I ones. I don't know. Sort of one of the monster thing. Um, they put a, a leather trouser on. Oh yeah, yeah. And stick their entire leg into the snake's hole. Yeah, they get swallowed. What? And they get Wait, what? Swallowed. Sorry, I'm a bit yes. confused about what's. So there's, the there's a the snake hiding in a bank, isn't it? It's like a massive snake. Right. I hate snakes, and um, they they put on uh, like leather trousers and stick their leg down the hole, and then the snake... What, the sna the, the, oh, the snake comes out and then... Yeah. Starts to swallow their leg. Why would you do and that? And then they have a low... <laughs> to catch a snake to, I guess... Oh. You're, you're, you're the worm for fishing. You're the worm. In I don't like this. Yeah. And then they, put, they haul you out and then, and then kill the snake. Oh. And the leather thing is so that the snake doesn't digest, the, so all the juices doesn't oh. yeah. digest the and human body. And maybe the teeth can't go through it or something? Yeah, or? yeah I think just, that as well. Oh, it's just there was awful. A guy, did you see the guy... I, I think this is right. He was attempting to be swallowed by a snake as well. Um, and it was going to be like a world record. But What's the... Re what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on, go on, just go on. I think I'm right in saying this. The Guinness don't even accept, you know, heaviest cat anymore. <laughs> I think, unfortunately... Don't they? No. Oh. They Sorry, found an Sally. infinitely yeah. heavy one in Dumfries, yeah. didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, who this was big, it was big, it was set up, it was like with a, like a Nat Geo kind of thing. Um, the snake started swallowing on the wrong end, so he went head first, <laughs> and, and he wasn't ready for it, and so they had to pull him out and cancel it. Did he not have his big leather hat? 
<laughs> they do. I mean, they catch fish like that sometimes in America, don't they? They get the cat. They um, it's catfish, and they'll get the cat to grab hold of their fist, and then when it's bitten, they oh pull it out. Really? It's called catfisting. <laughs> Is it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be catfished, if <laughs> anything. Um, yeah. All right, we need, to, we need to move on to our All next right. fact. Um, so it is time for fact number two, and that is James. Okay, my fact this week is that in real life, the very hungry caterpillar would have gone around headbutting his mates. <laughs> there he is. So is that... Ah, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> no, it's really, it's gorgeous. It's so beautifully drawn. It's I love a lovely, it's, it's a great book. Picture. Yeah. So, um, but, but, uh, so, but in real life, this is what would happen. So these days, you know, all of these um, children's books are getting rewritten, aren't they? Like mm. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and whatever. Oh, yeah. And I'm calling for the very hungry caterpillar to be rewritten to be more factually accurate. Um, <laughs> because according <laughs> to the people at Florida Atlantic University, uh, whenever... Uh, caterpillars get really, really hungry and they don't have enough food. They'll go around looking for other caterpillars and then they'll attack them, knock them off where they're eating, and then they'll go in and eat their leaf. No oh. way. Yeah. Wow. And so that's what Eric Carle really should have been writing about. It's a tougher. Um, yeah. it's a tougher they book. don't eat yeah. strawberries. They don't eat ice cream. They don't eat lollipops. They don't eat salami. <laughs> they tend to only eat one kind of leaf. Any caterpillar. Oh, Whatever is, caterpillar you get. This is going to sell big, James. <laughs> <laughs> on so Monday, he got in one fight and he ate one <laughs> of the same kind of leaf that he's going to eat for the rest of the week. <laughs> they do occasionally, they occasionally get a species which will eat fruit. So you oh, might really? get one that would eat an apple, yeah. but it would only eat apple. Right. And it would only eat the same apple and it would live inside the apple it was eating until it was I, ready I to I actually work. would really enjoy that book. <laughs> 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 My... Yeah, well, uh, we used to call it the very hungry fatter pillar. <laughs> my kids <laughs> and I. But my partner Ian pointed out on the way here that Eric Carl was conscripted oh into. Yeah. yeah, he fought on the Siegfried Line. I think oh. it was. Yeah. So yeah, he was an American born. He, yeah, with a at German age fifteen, mom. he was cons conscripted, yeah. and he had to dig the trenches. In my head, that's a bit like a caterpillar. Do caterpillars dig. Oh. <laughs> I just wondered if he was eat. very hungry in his <laughs> hole. <laughs> And well, that's what gave him the idea. Well, he had a really... It, it was very... Because he his his family moved back to America uh, to and Germany. Then, and then sorry. he got conscripted again. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, no, 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 like no. That, that born was in the Germany, conscripted time. He was born in Germany. The family moved to America really soon. And then... The, or he was he, his early years were in America, certainly. Then the family moved back to Germany in 1935 right. when he was about six years old. So at the end of the war, he was conscripted to dig trenches and he yeah. was fired at and he, he was 15 I mean, he as was well 15 years old yeah, yeah. and wow. then and then after the war obviously had a horrible time his father was in a prison camp and and had a, an awful time then uh the family moved he certainly moved back to america and then he was conscripted a second time to go to to join the u.s army and to go back to germany again no. where he was involved in filling in the holes that he dug <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel quite bad that I'm shitting on his book now. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, no. I mean, is it any wonder that the follow-up bu book was called The Very Grumpy Ladybird? <laughs> 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 Hungry, uh, grumpy. Uh. And there if was another called Polar Bear, uh, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear, I think. He, yeah. wrote, well, he wrote a lot. Or in What Do You time. See? That's what books. Do You Hear? Yeah, because, yeah. yes. It's great, but great, a great artist. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Also, yeah. an amazing yeah. scheme off the back of this book, because there was an Eric Carle Museum that you can go to in America, and in the museum, everything, uh, there, was a, there was a great article that was written online of Every someone taking photo. Everything, everything has a edible. hole in it. Oh, sorry. Well, no, not everything's edible. That would be amazing, yeah. <laughs> no, every, ev so, like, if you go to the canteen, you buy a cookie, and the cookie has a massive hole in it. Like, it's Brilliant. A, so this guy is saving so much money in his... <laughs> Like there was, I remember reading that the New York Times, when they <laughs> removed the dot at the end of New York Times, that little on the headline, they were saving six hundred dollars a year back in the day when they did, like that little bit of ink cost right. them so much. Imagine how much that bit of cookie that's missing is. is well, what saving do they the do music. with those little bits of cookie though? Do they they give they sell they smaller sell cookies? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they don't with holes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's a <laughs> tiny. But yeah. imagine how you could ruin that museum by having Eric Carle's experience of warfare, <laughs> like a room. <laughs> that's yeah. That's not As the good go room in. to go in. Yeah, yeah trench digging. Trench and room. Yeah. yeah. So I went onto his website um, mm. because there is another problem in this book. Uh, and <laughs> th <laughs> that is that um, it, towards the end, the caterpillar goes into a cocoon. 
yeah. Uh, oh, and yeah. becomes a butterfly. Yeah. But butterflies don't go into cocoons. Butterflies go into chrysalises. Well, cat caterpillars. Caterpillars. Butterflies plants. don't go into anything. No, they come from chrysalises. No, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so some kids have written into him and said, well, why have you got a cocoon in your book? Uh, and he replied saying, well, there is a rare genus um, <laughs> that lives <laughs> in Siberia, North Korea, and the northern islands of Japan um, called Parnassian, which does pupate in a cocoon. <laughs> so he... He was hugely relieved when he found <laughs> out. <laughs> As in, that doesn't... What's the difference, sorry? What's yeah, wh the difference between a chrysalis and a cocoon? So a cocoon is made out of silk, uh, and a chrysalis isn't. <laughs> Uh, Christmas is made out of nylon. It's kind of made out of. Yeah. It's the difference between a, a cot and a cage. <laughs> it's, it's what it's made out of. And yeah, it's, uh, but you get quite a lot of moths that make cocoons. Okay. Uh, and other insects, right. but uh, butterflies don't. Uh, but he did then say, actually, you know, it's. Caterpillars don't eat lollipops either. This was just right. a. This it's was. A, it's yeah. a special caterpillar. It's allowed to do what it wants. Yeah. All right. It's a, it's a children's book. Grow up. <laughs> and that, do grow up. You know. Yeah. And I then um, another kid wrote in saying yeah. caterpillars don't have noses. <laughs> oh, get ah. stuffed! Just, uh, I mean, just you know. Come and he on. said, "Is that a yes, nose or a mouth?" I know it has a nose on its face, but this feature grew out of my imagination. They don't have shoes either, caterpillars. <laughs> Um, can I ask a, a potentially stupid question? Sure. The, is one of them, is one of the, the chrysalis and the cocoon, is one of them made and one of them grows out of the body of the... One of them spun, like a cocoon is spun, whereas so a chrysalis a silk is thing, more yeah. like... I always think of it like almost like a bird covering itself in its wing kind right. of thing. Right. You know nice. I mean? Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, very cool. I read an anecdote about him, which I, I'm only bringing it up because I didn't understand it, so I'm hoping that maybe <laughs> you guys will. Um, so he said that his, uh, he wrote all these books, as you were saying, where it was sort of like the next kind of, so th the very busy spider, the very quiet cricket. And in an interview, he says that um, he found himself uh, in the changing rooms after swimming, and a satirical young fan suggested a book entitled The Very Slow Penis. <laughs> to the author's great amusement. <laughs> and I can't work out what's funny about that. <laughs> Satirical. He did say it's funny. <laughs> What's a slow penis? Oh, ask your wife. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I don't know. Was sorry, was he married? Was he? What was his orientation? He was married. Carl. Yeah. He was married. Yeah, yeah. He was married. yeah. 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 Don't is know. It, does it also know. have a hole going through it? This book. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't work out what a slow penis is. Yeah. Anyway, there's a slow Loris. It was a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you've you've anyway, stopped us all, Dan. Thank you. At yeah. no such thing on Twitter <laughs> if you want to <laughs> let us know. My wife is watching online at home. Oh. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I was well, he's, he got their hairs right anyway. Butterflies yeah. and moths, I discovered, have nearly 10 billion hairs on them. No. 10 billion, because these scientists oh. have spent over a decade studying the surface area Count of animals. Counting, <laughs> <Isn't it> counting? <laughs> yeah. No, the surface area of animals. I mean, that's such a funny thing, I think. Like, yeah. So a cat's yeah. surface area is actually like a ping pong table. <laughs> 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 oh, what, the the comparative <laughs> to but the yeah, problem yeah, is when you cover bee. when you cover your ping pong table in cats, the ball doesn't <laughs> bounce nearly as well. Yeah. And the a RSPCA sea otter will, <laughs> will, yeah. will. Sea otter oh. has the surface area of a professional hockey rink. Because <gasps> they've because yeah. they've got, they've got is it the, the hairs? So many, yeah, yeah, so many they hairs, so many different hair. hairs. That's brilliant. Hmm. Uh, and a honeybee has the same number of hairs as a squirrel. Really? Wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> I know, is that mental? <laughs> yeah, That's the Georgia crazy. Institute of Technology. Oh, not let's say mental, sorry, isn't that uh, just astonishing? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's amazing. What yeah, do we, they were what running we calculations to find the true surface area of animals or the surface area that includes every location where dirt can be collected. Wow. Um, because they were trying to work out ways of uh, keeping things clean. Right. What a cool organisation. What a fun... A cool ten, year, okay, ten, I mean ten years. Yeah, that's <laughs> grueling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so dogs obviously shake. Or, or every animal has a different way of keeping clean. Sometimes the fur helps them to stay clean. Sometimes it doesn't. It's where you must, ne you must never shave a dog. I'm sure you haven't, but mm. don't shave a dog, even a really furry one. And 
B- no, but they bees, shave, but bees, bristles, bristles depend. They shave, don't they? They, well, they, do, they do, yeah, but they, yeah, but you shouldn't not really, you, you shouldn't sha- really shave your not dogs. Not to the no. skin. No, no, no not, not with really, a. No, it's not good for it. I used to have a chow. They don't Stop get a, it. They don't get a number one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> My you shouldn't chow shave your chow. Number one. You yeah. shouldn't. You shouldn't do that. That's bad. <laughs> that's what Dan, Google said. That's what. Were you told the chow chow needs to go and have a number one? Did you go down to the hairdressers and say, short as you can, mate? Yeah. Yeah. And watch out for the numbers twos. They will explode. Um, um, yeah, the fruit flies use hairs on their head and thorax to catapult dust off themselves at accelerations of up to 500 times Earth's gravity. I don't even know what that means. Yes, uh, nice yeah. Trick. <laughs> yeah. I was, my mouth was desperately wanting to go, wow! And I was like, I have no <laughs> idea what you just <laughs> said to me. Anyway, um, that's, that's what they found. I read the other day that there's a spider where when they have sex, at the end, the... Um, spider sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, male catapults himself away. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah so that he doesn't get the eaten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but if we were the same size as that spider, yeah. I worked out that it would be the same as us having <laughs> sex, not me and you, Andy, whoever, you know, sure. <laughs> us having sex in central London yeah. and then immediately catapulting ourselves to Thorpe Park. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and what better way to celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to stay the night? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> That's where he went. The bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Just a load what? of blokes in <laughs> Thorpe Park all together. <laughs> <laughs> Spider sex. Yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> um, on on uh, the idea of James, this whole thing that you have about the, uh, the yeah, yeah. incorrect facts about children's books, here's one thing that I... Uh, this feels like a very QI thing, so I'm sure a lot of people already know this. I didn't, though. When you see a lot of kids' books, when there's a, a whale, uh, let's say a blue whale or any kind of whale that's surfacing, yeah. there's always this beautiful spout of water oh that's yeah. coming out, and there's yeah, Jog- that's yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't do that. What? I feel like I've seen that in real life. Is no, ah, uh, you have. Oh, what? <laughs> Go on. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> but his horse was called Thursday. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the doctor was his mum. That's yeah. the. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you see if you see any kind of thing where it's a whale with a huge yeah. like yeah, the yeah water spout. coming out spout of water spout of water. <laughs> <laughs> that is basically, according to experts, that's that is what would happen if a whale is drowning. Oh. They don't spout water out of their blowhole. That's their nostril. That's their breathing. They don't put oh. water out oh through there. So, oh they, okay. so when so you they see, br- they do breathe. When they you see that, the breathing is moist air that's just collected inside, and that's oh. what's coming out. So if you ever see a whale where there's spouts of water coming down, it is drowning. So it what is a I've dying seen, whale. I've not seen a drowning whale. I've seen like a water vapor whale. Yeah, exactly. Right, You're seeing right, water right. vapor, and it gives that misty kind of look. But like proper a kettle. water, <laughs> like yeah. a kettle, yeah. exactly. But if oh. you see a fountain, that's yeah, you go save that whale. Wow. Yeah. So basically, um, what it means <laughs> is every drawing of a whale in a child's book it's dying. Very upsetting. is a dying whale. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> very upsetting. Oh. Like that's wow. great. Yeah. I love can, it. I, can I tell you one more thing about um, animals in children's literature? Yeah, go on. So uh, the story of Peter Pan. Yeah. yeah. Features a crocodile. Yeah. That swallowed a clock. So, <laughs> in 2011, there was a crocodile which was uh, in a zoo in Ukraine, and it swallowed a mobile phone. Oh and yeah. the owner was a lady called Rima uh, Golovko, and the zookeepers didn't believe her. They said, the crocodile can't possibly have swallowed your mobile phone. And the crocodile started ringing. <laughs> and they realized, no, he absolutely has swallowed that phone. Yeah. She was trying to take a really cool shot of the, of the crocodile fr- from, uh, from you know, just inside the enclosure, and unfortunately. Yeah, and they, tr- they really, they, they didn't, there, w- there isn't an ending to the story because they were trying to pep him up because he was feeling a bit peaky. Oh um, no. they were the, the way to pep up a crocodile that's feeling a bit peaky, it turns out, is to feed it live quail rather than uh, pork. Um, okay. Yeah. I suppose crocodiles, they eat like stones, don't they, to help them digest things, I think, do they? Oh, maybe. So they don't always have just food in the stomach. No. So I'm just trying to... But well, even a spin on this. even an early Nokia will <laughs> they, they <laughs> trouble s- it. Scientists, those weirdos, <laughs> mad. They they've done they've 
I don't know how, but they, they found out that crocodiles like classical music. <laughs> okay, really? <laughs> and they prefer classical music, and they therefore think that dinosaurs would have <laughs> enjoyed <laughs> classical music as well. Uh. And the way they did that was they got a crocodile interested in MRI scan. <laughs> and the report says, you know, with some technical difficulty, it was quite hard to get the crocodile <laughs> <laughs> into the scan. Because you need it to be awake to listen to the music. You need it to be awake you? to listen to the music, yeah. exactly. Isn't it very loud in an MRI scanner? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I imagine it was key horrifying key for yeah. the crocodile. Yeah, poor thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least oh. it had a bit of Mozart to listen to. Yeah, I guess. At least yeah. it had Mozart. It's <laughs> quite interesting, the effect of music on animals. Um, shall I hit you with some more of those facts? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I investigated that a <laughs> tiny bit <laughs> and went down the deepest of rabbit holes. I, I discovered that mosquitoes who are listening to dubstep eat less <laughs> <laughs> and have less sex. Is it because they're dancing? So this... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's they're going, let's make it stop. <laughs> yeah, they found that female mosquitoes that were entertained by the song Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites <laughs> landed on their host less frequently and attacked much later than mosquitoes who weren't listening to that music. Um, the mosquitoes had far less sex when dubstep was playing. So uh, they think that that's um, partly because male mosquitoes identify females by the characteristically lower buzzing of their wings, and the male um, uh, raise the, they do a courtship rit ritual and raise the frequency of the sounds they produce until they match, and that process is disrupted by playing dubstep. Oh. dubstep. Wow. So they think that ele researchers think that electronic music could provide a new method of personal protection. Oh, oh. no. What? <laughs> what if you don't like dubstep either? Then yes, well, exactly. You've got a real choice think? to make there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not, oh. a, bad, not a bad plan, though, if you're yeah, going to the Yeah, dubstep or malaria. Yeah. That's, That's <laughs> what I was thinking, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, more? Yeah, yeah, give us one <laughs> more. Give us one more. Um, We've got to move on in a sec to our next fact. Yeah. Well, one was a bit dumb. It's just sharks appear scarier if accompanied by ominous music. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a, you say it's a bit dumb, but I think it's a bit dumb, dumb. Yeah, yeah <laughs> dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but they were, uh, they were then encouraging um, uh, documentary makers to be very, very careful of the soundtracks yeah. that they used. Oh, really? Um, because oh, really? Yeah, because how animals are seen in documentaries yeah. um, has a direct impact on how much money you can raise for that particular breed in conservation. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I, yeah, watched a TV yeah. I was watching a TV show yesterday which featured some sharks, and early in the show there was some ominous music, and at the end, actually, there was some rather majestic music. And it, did, it does change the way you feel. Yeah. How much yeah. money did you give? None. All <laughs> oh, right, but uh, I'll consider it. Yeah. I wonder how many sharks have sort of, you know, been uh, drawn towards a documentary maker and gone, such a good old son. <laughs> 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 At least one. Uh, we need to move on to our next fact. Um, oh, just one, oh, sorry, just one super quick thing I just wanted to say. I didn't realize Shrek was based on a book. Shrek, the, the cartoon, uh, it Mike Myers, and yeah, yeah, it was a German story. It's a novel. Is oh, it no, I don't know if it was German. It was just, no. it was a short story, like it was a short oh. book, but it was a, it was a book. And then I was reading into Shrek, and it turns out that there were a lot of people that tried to jump off the fame of Shrek by literally ripping it off. And there was a movie that was put out that was called Donkey Yoti, as in Donkey <laughs> Yoti. And That's it was good. literally Donkey from Shrek that was yeah. the uh, main character in it. And the tagline of the poster, there was no shame. They said, from the producers who saw or Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Just went for it. Doesn't Sancho it. Panza ride a donkey all the way through that? He does. That yeah. must be a weird book. <laughs> 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 all right, let's move on to our next fact. Yeah. It is time for fact number three, and that is Andy. My fact is that the false gecko, which has the Latin name pseudo gecko, is a gecko. <laughs> 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 there are ten species of false gecko. They're all geckos. <laughs> not one of them is not a gecko. And they're, they're, it's just a name. It's just a really, so really weird, bad name. Yeah. And yeah. I, I couldn't find why they're called false geckos. I think maybe they were found and assumed to be something different. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, geckos are wonderful. Um, <laughs> they are really wonderful. Is that a false gecko? That is. It's hard to say. <laughs> 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 we can say for sure it is a gecko. Oh, yeah. 
Um, can I tell you something? So just based on this picture, which you won't be seeing if you're listening at home, sorry. Um, the gecko, and in fact, if you're at the back of the room, it's, it's going to be hard. But there's a gecko, the thing here, the gecko's eye here, <laughs> it's got, it's, it's, so its eye, its pupil is uh, vertical. Yeah. Know, it's, uh, so the eye is in two halves, left and right. And there are these, f so it's, it's undulates though. There are these four spots, top, four spots top to bottom. Yeah. And the gecko can kind of crunch the halves of its eye together to focus or pull them apart if it needs lots of light in its eye. So it can have a very cool. big pupil. But when it's all crunched together, obviously there's not much light entering the eye. And that's a problem because they, they, uh, they're largely nocturnal. So the, the four dots up and down the pupil of the eye, they act as four separate pinhole cameras. Oh, wow. And they all focus the light, the little light they get on the same part of the retina. So it, it is able to get four times the light entering its eye and see quite well with this remarkable four-point eye pupil. Brilliant. I just think yeah. it's amazing. It is. That is yeah. incredible. Are you telling that us that because you don't know why it's called a false gecko? Yeah. Yep, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there are, there are geckos that don't have legs that look like snakes. I would have thought that would have been the false gecko. Oh. Very good, cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are, there are, there are, huh. geckos, are, they, are they geckos without legs, and they are, they are gecko from the family gecko. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Wow, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, some of the, there's, yes. Gekota, <laughs> Gekota. There's six families of geckos with no legs. They're all endemic to Australia and New Guinea. Right, brilliant. I think and I've they've seen got the photo, vestigial yeah. hind limbs. Apparently, they look a tiny bit like flaps. Yeah, the the yeah, the you can see these little bumps that come out, but huh. and that yeah means it's a lizard. Yeah. And, um, yeah. No eyelids either. No Almost eyelids. every gecko has no eye. There are 1,500 species of gecko, yeah. and all bar 43 have no eyelids. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the Eublepharidae which literally means good eyelids in ancient Greek. <laughs> they have eyelids, but even they also lick their eyes like all the other geckos do to moisten them, despite having eyelids. Right, oh. amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Have you, have you heard of the fuck you lizard? No. <laughs> this, is, this is a lizard, <laughs> which it's, it's not its official name. That's not the, the scientific name. But um, <laughs> it, was, it was a lizard that uh, when Americans were over in Vietnam during the war, they kept noticing that they just, ke they just kept hearing a little voice going, fuck you. <laughs> and they're like, who, what is going on? And they'd be walking up, fuck you. And, and so they all discovered that it's just this lizard that just makes a noise. <laughs> Come on. And like, fuck you. And so it became known as, yeah, the fuck you lizard. Why That's do we crazy. not all have one of those? Yeah. 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 Like, the noises, I, I, was, I was surprised at the gecko noises though, that they bark. Well, they're the only lizard that makes a noise, geckos. Uh, are they? Yeah, that's because that, if you think what noise does a lizard make, it they doesn't. They've got vocal cords. You, would, you they, wouldn't have yeah. thought it was. Woof! <laughs> <laughs> but that, that sort of it sounds more like a sort of electric buzzer ring, doesn't it? S yeah. Sally, do you think a gecko could ever win the palm dog? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> Fuck it's you! A, it's <laughs> 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 but. <laughs> We covered a few years ago. I think we covered. I mean, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, not, covered not the palm dog. I mean, maybe no, the but palm. No, there was. There's an award called the, he the Hero Dog of the Year, and a few oh years yeah, ago, yeah. it was won by a cat. I, that's <laughs> yeah. true. That really? That's yeah. That I presented really. Hero Dog of the Year. <laughs> <for us>. No. <laughs> well, I don't know. Was it last year or the year before? No, not this year. But anyway, quite recently. And this Hero is dog going to year. sound a bit mean now. <laughs> but one of the finalist dogs. <laughs> Okay, this is just my problem. It was a finalist dog, and it wasn't a chihuahua, but it was similar. It was very, very <laughs> small. <laughs> and um, his owner slash mummy, whatever you prefer to call it, <laughs> said that <laughs> the dog had saved her partner's life by giving him um, CPR. CPR. <laughs> <laughs> That's her. And she's got home, and, and her husband is kissing the dog. The That's dog what's happened there. <laughs> <laughs> the dog was very, very small. Very small. <laughs> I don't know why the dog was trained in CPR. <laughs> but anyway, it's all a bit of a problem for me, having to just <laughs> silence the questions in my brain <laughs> that kept coming. Well, because there's so many stages. You've so got to lay the yeah, head like back a bit. <laughs> You've got to... <laughs> you just want to go, you're, you're shitting me, right? Yeah. This is like <laughs> and did, was, that, was that the... Oh, it was one of the was finalists. Didn't win, didn't win, didn't win. Didn't well, who win. the fuck Are you top that as a dog? <laughs> What, what you did oh the winner no, do? They, the winner, the winners were amazing. There were these water dogs that who did um, open heart surgery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dog with SpaceX in Mission Control. Hey, animals um, have done some amazing things. They have, I do want to yeah. before we move on from geckos, though. Eh? Did you know that in January last year, German Hans Kurt Kubus was caught at Christchurch Airport, New Zealand, with 44 geckos concealed in his pants? 
Hearts. <laughs> no. I don't there. know how they got there. <laughs> but there is a they were doing a small incision <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just walking through immigration. He's... <laughs> ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> There's a massive market in gecko smuggling. Really? That's a amazing. New Zealand gecko, because they're diurnal, like most geckos are nocturnal. Right. New Zealand gecko is, is diurnal, very, very pretty, and they can go for about $22,000. So there's What's a diurnal? massive. Oh. Sorry, diurnal. Do, oh, I've got, is that the wrong word? No, 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 You'll yes, get used tell to this. me more about Yeti. <laughs> My ignorance uh, oh, questions. No. Yeah. Dan, do you want to know a cool... So, di diurnal, awake in the day. Yeah. Uh, nocturnal, awake at night. Yeah. Crepuscular. Dusky. Yeah. I know that. Dawn and dusk. Dawn You're and awake dusk. at dawn and dusk. Oh, you wow. are crepuscular. crepuscular. From dusk till dawn. Yeah. 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 Well, not from dusk till dawn. At dusk <laughs> and then again at dawn. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> what happened to the ternal bit of the word? Why did they lose that? I don't know. Yeah. Latin, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, speaking of Latin, I was reading about Alien, the Roman writer and oh. author. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah. he said that if a dead gecko lands in your wine, then it's fine. <laughs> but okay. if it lands in your olive oil, it will taste terrible, and when you eat it, it will immediately give you lice. Wow. Oh, it's okay. great. They've got lots of uh, symbolic. There's lots of superstition around geckos yeah. and lizards, aren't there? If you find a lizard tail in your left shoe, it is very lucky. Do not take it out. <laughs> is that real? <laughs> that's, what, that's a real one. That's a Just current day one. Just the tail, yeah. Because oh. wow. obviously their tails come off and they can regrow them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do. do you know starfish, though, can regrow... If you take its leg off, it can regrow a whole starfish from the leg. That's nuts. <laughs> like that's cra that's crazy though. What do they have? What do they have? Um, they store all the nutrients in in the leg until they can grow a mouth. But do but they? Ha yeah. Do, do they do have any kind of? I brain. don't know what a starfish's brain does. It have a brain or intelligence or any kind of thing? Past, or don't know. Uh, probably doesn't know it's a starfish. Is the truth? <laughs> no, yeah, 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 yeah. But they you know, they, distributed they have neurons. Throughout yeah. It. yeah. But that's crazy that they because you'd figure that's as you're saying that's the bit that you would need and then you grow back the mm. limb. Yeah. But to yeah. grow back the neuron. But what if you cut all five off? Do they grow into five different? Do you think it's five? Fish? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, don't know. know. Pass. Uh. Uh. Probably. Uh. Can I tell you about a guy called Ben Barr? Sure. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's well, we gave Sally one veto <laughs> for this show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's I want to hear all about Ben Barr. He's a New Zealand uh, lizard expert, herpetologist, I guess, and mm. he was looking for a particular gecko called the Capola gecko, uh, which was spotted for the first time in 1968, and then once again in 2007, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. No oh. specimen had ever been observed or collected apart from those two occasions. No one knew if it was still uh, existing, you know, or, or alive. Or if or it was a teleporting horse. Ex well, exactly, <laughs> yeah. And he, he had to, he led three trips to search for it. And basically the process of searching for this Capola gecko is just to turn over rocks. <laughs> and he's turned over so many thousands of rocks. <laughs> He spent two years turning over rocks. Leaving looking no for stone this gecko. unturned. He left no stone unturned. <laughs> he didn't even know for sure what it looked like. <laughs> because, not exactly, not exactly. And uh, no scientist had ever held one in the hand. And after two years and three expeditions, he found one. Hey! Yeah. He nice. said he was so excited. He said it was very similar to having a baby, the euphoria. And have you bought the movie rights? <laughs> <laughs> it's just lovely, yeah. And he, he found nice. four. He found four on the same expedition. Oh, that's cool. I imagine under the same rock, but still. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe. Just, yeah. But imagine that determination to keep on. It's like your um, surface area measuring <laughs> yes, scientist. Yeah, you do admire right. it. Yeah. 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 I got addicted to watching conservation TV at one point, like yeah. the presentations of all the scientists, because it was I mean, all the conservation scientists, zoologists, I guess they're called. Um, because they, they was so, it was so funny, like the Argentinian wolfman. He had long, long hair. <laughs> and I, and it w he really appeared to be having an affair with the uh, British cheetah lady. <laughs> and and there, was a, there was this really adorable couple, I think, from Chile, from Chile, who had been looking for the onion wildcat. Uh, we spent to it and they said, we have not ever seen the onion wildcat. It's been five years. And they showed all these 
photos of uh, slides of the Land Rover in different places where they had looked for the Andean wildcat <laughs> <laughs> and not seen it. And they were so charming and like, oh, well, it's been an interesting journey, but <laughs> we think there is wildcat. We think this is a wildcat uh, poop or whatever they said, a <laughs> stool. And then they went off and then this really arrogant, tall, American, thin American guy came in from the uh, rare wildcat conservation society and he went, wildcat? Wildcat, and he just had 50 slides of wildcats. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's amazing. Wait, were you presenting yeah. him with an award? No, I was, just okay. <laughs> I was just depressed. I was in bed watching them on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I became very interested in the, the women who run sloth sanctuaries. Oh, yeah. Because they seem to have absolutely no zoological training whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, know, and know nothing about sloth. So there's this one woman who goes to a sloth orphanage in Costa Rica who... Um, you know, people would find, she was like, I, I was here, she'd gone on a cruise with her husband and a baby sloth had fallen out of a tree and she'd known right then she needed to abandon her life in the States and start a sloth orphanage, <laughs> which she did. And the problem she had, she has to stop the sloths having sex, or is it sloths, how do you say it? She had to stop them having sex with each other she didn't have room for any more and people kept <laughs> bringing them so they were kept strictly segregated. And That's a slow penis. <laughs> that is a slow <laughs> penis. There we go. Yes. Very nice. That is a slow penis. But one of them got, got mange and she just shaved that shaved it and she didn't know whether this was the right thing. She shaved them and so can you shave she, she, a, she are you allowed shouldn't to shave, a sloth? shave a sloth, I'm no. sure. And then no. and then smothered them in sulfur butter and wrapped them up in in pink and blue bandages and naturally what? they so died. What is going <laughs> <laughs> It's like this woman needs to go to vet school to know if that's <laughs> And there was a PhD student, and I ended up watching this, you know, documentary series about them and getting absolutely obsessed. There was a PhD student <laughs> there called Becky, who was. Who was, who was do you I remember the word? I think we've mentioned Becky on the podcast. But yeah, Have you? Has she been on? Like, no, she hasn't been. Oh, we can get her. Is no, it? but I mean, you know, like, oh, geez. <laughs> it was really, it was really. Weird. I think but I feel so she was northern. I feel she was northern. Yes, she was she's quite from the north of the UK, lethargic yes. herself. Okay. <laughs> she said, "I couldn't decide what to do for my PhD." And I went to see my tutor and I said, I can't decide between jaguars <laughs> <laughs> and sloths. And he said, what about sloths? <laughs> so here I am. And then and the cheetah lady went past and went, yeah, that's really <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, wh when did we, when, would, when was we she did mentioned? A fact about We did a fact about sloths a few years ago and I think I just remember her, I think she's, Becky, did she's you say She's probably her professor. Yeah, and she Sloth was just. Professor, she's one of the most. Uh, she's Eminent. one of the most knowledgeable people about sloths in the world. Yes. She just went over there and decided. Not very to many start. people know very much about sloths, it turns out. Right. Wow. <laughs> but she, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching her throwing two sloths in a swimming pool. <laughs> one of them can swim, and one type of sloth can swim, and the other t type can't. Oh my Sally, God. It <laughs> feels like you're watching sloth torture videos. <laughs> yeah. I must, I'm sorry to. That's what I thought. I thought, how is this allowed? So have, you s have you seen the video where a sloth mistakens its own arm for a tree branch <laughs> and then can't do anything about it because it's so slow it just falls <laughs> from the tree not even sloths know anything about sloths that's the problem yeah no one knows anything. So they true. can be quite fast though can't they there's the ones that can swim are they quite swim fast. really yeah. they swim yeah. really fast yeah. if you put them in a fast current they're just I think drugged they, aren't they yeah, there's, they, yeah. there's leaves that they that's just drugs isn't oh, it for is them it? Yeah. they only eat one I did right. think about r writing a film about this sloth sanctuary, which is why, and mm. um, you obviously you can get the sloths out of uh, Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> their agents, they, they their agents will never get back to you. That's yeah, the problem with a yeah, sloth. You, you know? can't, <laughs> can't transport them. <laughs> Though one of the sloth sanctuary owners was arrested by police trying to smuggle a pygmy sloth out for an uh, exotic zoo, private In zoo his pants, person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, to, just speaking of, um, so this lady ran a sa uh, sloth sanctuary. I was reading about a woman who runs a hospital for Hawaiian monk seals. And I read about her. Oh, this is amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, so she, um, she runs this, <laughs> this monk seal place. <laughs> and she was out and she was, you know, getting lunch or something like that. And she gets a missed call. On, or like she gets a call on her phone. She picks it up. No one's there. So What's going on? Um, it happens nine times while she's out. It's the crocodile from the zoo. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. No, no she it's somebody's been swallowed by the crocodile <laughs> going, let me out, let me out. 
she gets back to the Monk Seal Hospital and she's called, she's called like the phone people. She's like, is there like anything wrong with the line? It looks all fine. Gets back to the hospital and she looks and on the phone is a little gecko just pressing its finger on the call button and it's calling her and that was it. She was getting... Yeah, they've been calling loads of other people as well. Yeah, she, it called... Yeah, a it made a bazi it, the newspaper said a bazillion phone yeah. calls. <laughs> <laughs> that was the official number, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just um, little gecko feet. Can I do a quick quiz before we move on? Yes, we do need to move on, yes. Um, so this was a weirdly named animal, pseudo gecko. Is it a gecko, is it not? Um, I've got some more like this. So the coffin fish. Can the coffin fish cough? Ah. That's a quiz. Or are you tricking us with pronunciation? Does it live I'd say it in, does a float. Float. in a coffin? It does float. It's yeah. coffin fish, like it's a coffin, coffin but mm. can it cough? Uh, I'll say no, it can't. I don't think fish can. Well, you're wrong. Oh. Um, fish can expel air through their gills if things get stuck in there, and we call that coughing. That's a cough. Um, can the swallowtail butterfly swallow its own tail? <laughs> yes. No, I'm going to no. say no. No, obviously not. <laughs> um, obviously but the dead. only fact I know about it is it has an eye on its penis, <laughs> so it can see where it's going. Crumbs. Really? That yeah. is not true. It is true. <laughs> The swallowtail, the swallowtail, butterfly. A bird? But oh, butterfly. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It's a butterfly. <laughs> I was thinking uh, so swallow. You've read the very hungry no. caterpillar. That's the final <laughs> scene. And finally, does the bloody nose beetle often have a bloody nose? I'll say yes. Andy, I've told you, insects don't have noses. Oh! Will you please listen? Oh, I fell right into it. No, it expels blood from its mouth. Ah. That's why it's called that. It expels blood from its <laughs> mouth. Um, oh we're we're going to need to move on to our final fact of the show. Can't bear it. The show? Or oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> right with you. I, I feel, going, yeah. Right? I want to talk about <laughs> the yeah. penguin who got a knighthood, and I want to talk about the Welsh corgi who's got a PhD. <laughs> 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 Never mind. Just keep those facts to myself. Well, we'll explode with them and we're become doing a very Q &A boring at, the end. at dinner party. Someone ask about the PhD corgi, <laughs> please. Uh, okay, it is time for our final fact of the show, and that is Sally. The band, the Super Furry Animals, do you see what I did there, wore Yeti costumes for a year at, uh, on their Phantom Power Tour, and they said it really changed their personalities, wearing costumes with that much hair. Becoming much hairier changed how they performed. What was the surface area when they <laughs> were... <laughs> <laughs> It was the surface area of Wales. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. So I don't it know much great, about I, I don't know much about the super furry animals. Well, you know, to be honest, until yesterday, nor did I. <laughs> 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 but they're Welsh. Welsh. Rockers. Yeah. Like no, they're Welsh, Welsh they're like the centerpiece of the cool Cymru, uh, you know, Welsh resurgence with Gorky's zygotic minky. I'm going to say that wrong. Is that That's correct, okay. isn't it? You're a super fan, though, aren't you? I am a super You're a super fan. furry fan of the super furry animals. And of Gorky's zygotic monkey as well. You're wearing yeah. a T-shirt. Yeah. You're wearing a T-shirt right now. What's yeah. that? It's just a... Is they that a are very oh, first album. Oh, okay. Cover. Cool. Yeah. They are very, very cool. They, they, they did loads of, like... Yeah, they did uh, loads of crazy <laughs> stuff. They had yeah, lots they of, like, costumes and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, they yeah, bought a, they bought a right. tank <laughs> and drove it into the National Steadford. Uh, <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, they, they used all their... Um, they bought it for £10,000 from a one-eyed arms dealer with a limp Was the eye on the Bass. penis, or <laughs> <laughs> where was that? <laughs> In Nottingham. And then they sold it on to Don Henley from the Eagles. <laughs> really? Wow. Isn't that extraordinary? Like Just a real... Band, it wasn't, uh, you arms know, dealing band circuit it going was, on. <laughs> it wasn't That's the only really um, contact they had with arms dealers, either. They... They used... Cause they, they sampled lots of, uh, lots of sounds, didn't they? And they, they got some real guns. Uh, for for one of their, um, they had a Scottish engineer. They they sampled some um, gun sounds, and I can't find that fact. But what's with, the, what's with the Yeti thing? So, so why the did Yeti they thing? Yetis? They yeah. um, well, they'd experimented on the their album before. They had um, they'd had a some snow monsters. They decided they wanted some snow. They were really into having complete chaos on stage, you know. And um, they got some some uh, snow monsters on stage in Glastonbury during uh, the Northern Lights song, mm. and there were volunteers who were there. They tended they were members of Mogwai. Do you know all of Mogwai, these? Mogwai, yeah, no, no, a bit. And unfortunately, Mogwai just dropped an E before putting <laughs> the very hot suits on, <laughs> and it became quite oh. dangerous. So they had to have people running around giving them um, giving them water. But they they became they did want they were really into different kinds of creatures. And then they they came across a sculptor called Peter Gray who made loads of sculptures out of hair. 
and he suggested just making these these yeti costumes for them for the for a for a video for the video for golden retriever and they <laughs> they thought it was just brilliant and he, peter grace i'll tell you where it needs to be you need to shoot this on a glacier in iceland next to a giant fire which all the yetis are worshiping but they'd recently signed with Sony, who said that was an uninsurable concept. <laughs> so they did it in a studio in North London, and it sort of looks like the Yetis are playing inside a cardboard box, which is being <laughs> sniffed at and then urinated on by a dog. <laughs> um, but it's really, really cool. And yeah, they, would they would... So how did it change the personality? Yeah, it changed so. their personalities. They said they're none of them exhibitionists, really. They'd, you know, they're quite political and love music, very creative and you know, non-conformist and... And the rest of it. I mean, they they they, they uh, released a Welsh, entirely Welsh language LP, and then only toured it in America and Australia. For it example, went, it, yeah, it went uh, to top went twenty. Went into the top twenty. Yeah, yeah. but um, they said that uh, it was uh, like being transformed. They said none of them were exhibitionists in reality. It's an actual quote. But we were able to put these costumes on and become seventies rock monsters, and it drove the audience nuts. Yeah. Um, so they they really and I so it's kind of that. interesting the impact of hair, hairiness or hairlessness. I know. I think has it's incredible power. I think it's a costume thing. So my my son's fifth birthday was mm. um, last year, late last year, and I dressed up as Mr. Potato Head, and <laughs> I honestly felt. Did I you saw did you buy that or make it? I bought it from bought yeah. It. I bought it online. It's I really saw, cool. I saw it. It was it was. Yeah, was, was did it inflate it itself? Was it one of those? It was just you you uh, you wore it as like a fabric big piece of, um, yeah. it was like a brown big piece of fabric and then you could stick on the eyes and the ears and stuff like uh, that. It's, do you know what? It was a hit, Andy, despite you. Uh, I'm half. saying, I'm saying it was good. <laughs> We've lent it out to multiple parents ever since for Have their you? birthday parties. Yeah, we haven't even got it at the moment. It's online. Did your wife go as Mrs. Potato? No. No, no, she no, dressed no. normally. In but the evening, I she did. <laughs> <laughs> you had a bit of potato head <laughs> knocking in the evening, didn't you, Dave? <laughs> 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 But, um, How many eyes does Mr. Potato Head have? Ah. Two yeah, that you can see. Good question, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing, the confidence it gave me, because it was... <laughs> <on> <laughs> With that audience of five-year-olds who would have worshipped you anyway. I, no, I, I honestly... like. Really? I, yeah, it really, I felt like a superhero. It was amazing. Well, you... That's interesting. And I went up because it was <laughs> school had just started. My son was going to a new school. We knew yep. no one. So I, I went up to all the parents. I would never do that. Went up to all of them. Hey, what's up? At so the, par you uh, went to the school? party, not the school gates. This is a. Yeah, this oh is yeah, at the you party. Take the school yeah, yeah. dressed as a potato. No, no, this is the party. <laughs> oh, I'm, right, I'm Mr. Okay. Potato yeah, Head. Yeah, but what it. I'm just trying to say is, I don't think it's the hair necessarily. I think yeah. you, you must know this as an actor. It's when you have a different persona that suddenly comes over you, there's a weird yeah. confidence that makes you a bit unstoppable in a way. I was it unstoppable. Can go, it can go behavior. both ways. I'm, I'm thinking oh, really? <laughs> I have very vivid memories of it going the other way. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I suppose one, yes, I do, I do know what you mean. It's weird, when you play a bride in a film uh, or telly, people on set treat you as if you're getting married. Oh Even really? though they know you're acting, really? we all know you're acting, but you get treated, people open doors and they smile at you and go, oh, uh, Giles <laughs> Brandreth was telling me. <laughs> That he was due to do a um, an event with uh, Diana, Princess of Wales. Uh, shortly, turns out the the event was after she had died, and she was replaced on the day by Liz Hurley, <laughs> who was <laughs> not that similar. But apparently, <laughs> everybody treated Liz Hurley as if she were the Princess of Wales. They handed her posies and they all curtsied. Oh and wow. They it's, it's wow. interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a thing with autistic kids where if you put them in a mask, you can, not all, or, and you can't generalise, but lots of people have found that theatre can really help people who are very introverted to speak. Well, that's, that's really so interesting. Well, interestingly, just on topic, so what they were doing there, they were dressing as yetis. It's, yeah. not, it's not being a furry, but that's... A lot of people dress up <laughs> as furries, right? I think we should say what a what a furry is for those. I mean, yeah. So a furry is someone who creates, who feels more comfortable when they're wearing a costume that has been designed where it's an uh, animal. No, I think a furry animals. is just someone who's a fan of the culture of an, uh, you know, yeah. anthropomorphic animals, yeah. and some of them do like to work. Exactly. Yeah, sorry, they're very so keen. They they feel they get a bad press, and over sixty percent of furries feel that they are bullied. And get negative, uh, people have negative concepts. Yeah. The weird thing is only around 25% of all furries um, yeah. own a suit. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Huh. So I don't know how you classify yourself as a furry if you. Well, I guess you the you go to the cons and you you like uh, like what, reading in your, in your home clothes. Like, yeah, yeah. Not in a suit. I yeah. thought it was all about the suit. So uh, did I, but we're wrong. Maybe you can't afford it. But on the point of autism, there, there was one of these cons that had an <laughs> autism panel with right. furries. And there was a lady there who said that um, it really helps if you're autistic. So she said, for three days, I am not autistic. For three days, I am a giant anthropomorphic version of the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> and she feels... It helps break the ice. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> There we go. The first furry <laughs> convention. <laughs> the first furry convention was almost all people in normal clothes uh, or in human clothes, right. uh, and you can still see videos of it online. It was in uh, Holiday Inn in California, uh, and there's basically only one person who dresses up in a costume. Oh. It was a guy called Robert Hill who came dressed as a giant S and M deer called Hilda the Bambi Bambioid. <laughs> Crikey. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, but it's amazing. And they chose that place because it's so close to Disneyland. And they thought that everyone who's kind of into anthropomorphic animals would also be into Disneyland. Mm. And they went there. And they, you know, there's, if you go online, you can see, like, the history of all these conferences that they've had um, called Conference. Uh, and the first time they had a problem with a hotel was in 1994. And the problem was the <laughs> too hotel... Many, too many... All... all all the bathrooms got clogged drains. That was the problem. <laughs> that was the only problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was her, and the be breakfast buffet was, no. <laughs> um, apparently, it was too big, the hotel, so they couldn't fill it up with just their people, so there was a lot of other people there as well. Okay. Uh, and, you know, th they weren't so understanding, and there was right. lots of complaints. Uh, and then <laughs> a maid found a costume in a room by a person who had a costume of veteran of the psychotic wars, and it was a unicorn who carried a big sort of cartoon cherry bomb. You know, like, it's like a big black bomb. I mean, you've got a Nightmare T-shirt on in the front row, I can tell. Like, that's... So they, they would have, like, this big sort of black bomb shape, like you would have it. Oh, with, like, the, the yeah. wick coming out. Yeah, exactly. What is going so on? So they found this... <laughs> <laughs> the, the maid found this costume in the room. Right. And they called the bomb squad because there was a bomb in the room. But a cartoon bomb. A cartoon bomb. Although, what's the best place to hide a bomb? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but the, bomb. Um, the bomb squad didn't see it the right way, and they fined the hotel for making a prank call. So when the bomb squad came and they saw it was just cherry bomb and there was a unicorn costume next to us, they're like, you're wasting our time. And they find them, and they never were allowed to go back to that hotel again. Okay. I don't think anyone's oh, behaved gosh. reasonably there. What? What about this guy's just, he's just got a costume, it's not his fault. Yeah, I guess. They, they, I did, it did amuse me that qu quote in the article we've probably both read yeah, where yeah. Um, <laughs> they said, most furries, it's not an erotic thing, it just gets too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the other astonishing <laughs> fact was that there's 10,000 people in the UK who live as dogs. Uh... uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said on Google. And on so li on living as maybe dogs. Maybe not living as dogs, maybe like dogs wanting have a to dogs be have a very broad spectrum wanting of... Wanting to be re referred to or dress up as dogs or have handlers. And <laughs> and, they, and that seemed to be a different kind of outfit. Ten that seemed to lot. be a kind of... It's a lot. lot. Seemed to be a kind of white <laughs> unitard with little spots. Right. It feels like you no. might have read Live on the Isle of Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go for a walk every day. Yeah, yeah. well, oh, yeah. you know... <laughs> Am I one of your 10,000? <laughs> It may what? be a furry McFact, <laughs> or it may um, be true. The McFact. Just What's a broad spectrum of dogs, though? Like well, some, dogs, some dogs live in the house, some dogs might live in a kennel, some dogs are d uh, pampered house dogs. Yeah. Some there dogs is a BDSM thing of pups being a pup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got... You've got uh, you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know that. I did not know that. I said, yeah, yeah, to kind of gloss over it, rather than, <laughs> rather than to fully endorse. Um, but, you know, dogs divide into hound, pooch and mutt, don't they? Those are the three... Do they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the three broad categories <laughs> so of dogs. is the broad category of yeah, yeah. dog that you can choose to dress up as? No, <laughs> not at all. But, like, if you see a dog, normally you'll know within a second whether it's a hound, a pooch or a mutt, unless it's a Labrador, in which case it's just a dog. The, lab <laughs> the Labrador is the kind of classic dog. Right. Does no one else play hound, pooch or mutt? No. Ah. Extraordinary. Can Extraordinary. you get Andy an introduction to Hero Dog of the Year? <laughs> I think I could qualify. Yeah. I do, I do. Um, just on dressing up as, uh, as animals, um, so a lot of people who have to dress as animals a lot and not sort of for relaxation for their work are zookeepers. So oh yeah. And football mascots. Why do zookeepers... Well, uh, well zookeepers oh. have to dress as animals because either because they are interacting with animals who can't 
be exposed to too much human behavior. So baby gorillas, for example, if you have right. a baby gorilla that's been rejected by its mother, there are zookeepers in Cincinnati who had to spend all of their time dressed as gorillas. In a, in a suit? Yeah, they had to wear, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what they had to do. So I there thought was the animal just thought you were there, its parent, whatever no, you looked well, like. It, no, but that's the problem. It might think you're its parent. So oh they, had right. a, they had a baby gorilla who'd been rejected by its mother. Oh, right. And they had a couple of other gorillas who were willing to look after it, but weren't free yet. And so they had to like bridge the gap of looking after this baby gorilla with yeah. humans pretending to be gorillas so it didn't get too used to humans and, mm. and, and sort of stop being a gorilla. And so they had to do 24-hour shifts. They had to wear dark colors. They had to grunt while holding it. They had to play with it like a gorilla. It's just like drama would. school. Yes. <laughs> 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 and they had to carry it on their backs wearing fuzzy vests so mm. that it could get used to clinging on for, you know, wow. for support. That's yeah. Cool. I That's just think it's sweet. quite nice. Yeah. Um, and then there are the zookeepers who have to dress as animals. I'm sure you've seen this. When they're pretending there's an animal that's escaped. And so they have to dress as an animal and oh then run yeah. around. And, then and people have to catch them. And then not be shot with a tranquilizer dart. unless it <laughs> Although that has happened once. Um, <laughs> but there was a, there's a brilliant photo from 2004. Of some, there's a, a Japanese party of school children. They're all about, I'd say, four or five years old. And they are being approached by a life-size rhinoceros, which is a pantomime rhinoceros with two zookeepers in it, front and back, which are basically charging the school children. The teachers have to get the children away from the rhino. It looks genuinely terrifying. But is it wha how realistic is the costume? It's pretty good. Is it? If I was five, I would yeah. be very nervous. You'd be scared. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't think so, because I once did a... <laughs> I once did a kids show, I mean a long time ago, did a kids show with Sue Perkins in fact, mm. and called Lucy and the Dinosaurs and a friend of ours was playing a Tyrannosaurus Rex and, and uh, <laughs> Ben Moore, do you know Ben yeah, Moore? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ben Moore was a Tyrannosaurus Rex and he had a big costume and Sue Perkins very irresponsibly <laughs> said to the kids, hey, let's beat up Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex. <laughs> And the stage was stormed with f <laughs> upwards of 55 year olds <laughs> who just kicking the living daylights out of Ben Moore, who looks, you know, like a like early Mr. Muscle. Mr. Muscle's got muscly recently, have you noticed that? But anyway, Mr. Muscle <laughs> used to be uh, in the advert, but anyway, and Ben was just in the recovery <laughs> position, sort of crying yeah, and yeah. shaking. Oh. Get them off. Well, I've I been think beaten up in a chicken costume by Alan Davis on QI. You have? Yeah, yeah. Be it beaten up by who? By Alan Davis. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Actually he probably, I think he was taken out a lot of frustration from the previous 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no. But yeah, I was in a costume and he decided f as a joke, I think. Was this during the show or were you guys in a hotel room? <laughs> <laughs> it was for a Christmas special of QI. And the thing is, because the, the kind of slot that you look through is quite small yeah. and it's a big sort of costume, the one that I had, and I assume it was the same, it very easily goes in the wrong place and suddenly yeah. you can't see anything yeah. and it's boiling hot you're sweating and yeah. everything and all you can do is go fetal it's like literally the only thing and you did <laughs> <laughs> on set that were like while filming it was very in weird in front of you 700 you people there, you stayed there for half an hour it was incredibly <laughs> people had to talk you down <laughs> I once got I once got asked if I wanted to be an alien in a film oh in yeah. like a low budget was that the, the <laughs> Roman orator <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've got the look. Uh, no, it was a. Uh, I was playing basically that I would have been playing the beast that sort of landed in a in a meteorite and then That's had cool. crashed and then. But the guy, my friend who was casting the film, said, "You will just have to lie in a field in a rubber suit for a week," and <laughs> and I said no, and I regret it now. I bet. I wish I'd done it now. What was yeah. the movie? I don't know. <laughs> 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 it wasn't a big movie. It was in it. I small remember talking to some extras about playing aliens. Oh yeah. oh yeah, playing aliens is quite easy. You just wear silver wellies. <laughs> 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 they kept the home clothes on and just had silver wellies, just like alien feet going through a spaceship. That's good. <laughs> yeah. But so apparently, the just going back to furries a second, the conventions oh yeah. are <laughs> a nightmare for oh exactly yeah. the reason that you were saying about... Um, everyone's too hot. Yeah, everyone's too hot. They can't see anything. So anyone who's in a, uh, in a costume is just bumping into each other. You're, the article says, inevitably going to smack a child in the head because <laughs> your mm. arms are just, you know, whapping about. You can't see them at the level you that got you a big need tail. to. Sorry? You got a big tail, maybe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I was just trying to help. I was trying to contribute to the... <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it going that badly? <laughs> <laughs> take, the life take the life ring, Dan. 
<laughs> no, um, well, hey, by the way, we are going to have to wrap up really oh, soon. Yeah. We've, and we've gone really far over the have whole, we? like, um, yeah. Oh, no. like, God, I've, yeah, yeah. I've only just started. We're, we're oh. Can I give no. you some um, furry vocab and see if you can guess what they mean? Oh, oh cool, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so what do you think is a furry tan? Furry tan? F-U-R-I-T-A-N. Furritan. Oh, a Puritan. As someone who is like a Puritan, it's someone who only wears the costume. It's a furry fan who is not interested in any sexual content. Mm. That's oh, pretty really nice. good. Yeah, yeah. That's Puritan. Good. Yeah. Um, to scritch. Do you know what to scritch means? Uh, oh, you can't scratch yourself through the fur. Oh, that's so good. what do you do? I don't know. <laughs> it's not that, but oh. that would be good. It is to do with scratching. It's to scratch someone gently, often as a friendly gesture or greeting. Just do a little. Don't do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know, uh, can you guess what a fur pile is? Is that where they all? Is that like a, a fun bundle? Yeah, a bundle. They all well jump on top yeah. of each other. A carpet other. is like a, a carpet. You would say it has a shag pile. <laughs> so is it <laughs> broadly similar? It's pretty much that. It's a gathering of fully costumed participants who roll around on the floor, scratching each other. Yeah. Scratching yeah. got quite sexy all of a sudden. <laughs> Um, cool. Is that the and oh and and f uh, f this is an easy one, but fursona. When you're working oh, yeah. out what your, your furry character, is, yeah. yeah, you find yeah. your fursona. The other thing is yeah. that Andy mentioned tails earlier, yeah, and there could be an idea in the future that maybe we give all <laughs> get maybe give all old people tails for okay. balance. For balance, Carl, you're good at this game. <laughs> Um, yeah, but the idea is you get yeah. like these sort of mechanical tails and yeah. you put them on old people and they can tell if an old person <laughs> with is... With their consent and, <laughs> <laughs> and support. Yeah, of course. To stop them falling over, it's is it? Yeah, so uh, the, the tail can tell when they're about to fall over and it can move itself that, so it'll give them more balance. It'll stop people from falling over. I think Turn that's open to Dr. Octopus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just I completely that's terrifying. That's I think we should give them yeah. gecko feet instead. <laughs> Because yeah. you don't yeah. want to that what you're doing up there. <laughs> <laughs> that's one. Of, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> that's one of the reasons there's such a trade in geckos. Apparently, is they're being t uh, studied for the space program. Did you read that? The what? Well, the, the yeah, what? Because so their feet, because their so feet can stick to anything except Teflon. Oh. Isn't that weird? Oh. Oh, really? feet, gecko feet will stick to absolutely anything at all except dry Teflon. It's all right if it's wet, but... Isn't okay. Teflon, Teflon what we largely use in space, though? Yeah, so it's a, a problem. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. But they, they did an experiment where they thought, like... Because the, the, the clingability... <laughs> Great news! We've made you exactly as good as a gecko! Now get up to that space station! <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, well, they did, they did this Sorry. experiment where they got a load of geckos and they stuck them on stuff and then they <laughs> euthanized them all. And then they put them back up and they stayed exactly the same, stuck, dead, as alive. So. Wow. On that note, well, Dan. Yep. <laughs> um, always good to go out on a big laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That is all of our facts. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to get in contact with any of us about the things that we've said over the course of this podcast, we can be found on our Twitter accounts. I'm on at Schreiberland, Andy. At Andrew Hunter M. James. At James Harkin. And Sally. And I've just given it up. Thanks. I know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you're on Instagram, though. I am on Instagram. I think I'm Sally Smack on Instagram. Sally Smack. Okay. I'm Smack the Pony. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and we are also on um, Twitter as a group as No Such Thing, or you can email us at podcast at qi.com or go to our website, no such thing as a fish.com. All of our previous episodes are up there. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Sally, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you so much for having it's me. It's been awesome. Uh, and we'll see everyone. There. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, that's. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>Uh, so, if we can fade the music a bit, this is the show's over now. Um, where Brett, are we okay to do a bit of a bit of uh, chatting? And are we so all good, or are we run over time? Five minutes. Five minutes. So sorry, everyone. There was just so okay, much in there. Okay, can I ask who's the person who sent me a message saying the newest species in lizard in New Zealand was discovered by me? <laughs> are you lying? Oh, yeah. Wow. No. <laughs> That's not evidence. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> uh, it's but, so substantial. But, but also, that wasn't the bit he was asking, were you lying about? <laughs>
Are you Ben Barr? Are yeah, you I'm Ben? Ben Barr. Oh. No, son, I'm an engineer and Wow. What, so what cool. is it? What's your name? Can we get a mic over, actually? Let's quickly get yeah, a mic. Yeah. T tell Sorry, us your name, yeah. first of all. I'm Lockie. Lockie? A very He's New definitely Australian from New Zealand. Yeah. Hi, Lockie. <laughs> <laughs> We've established. Um, I named it Hopladeculus Tohu after working with some of the indigenous Māori communities in New Zealand because uh, it was important to their, their tribes or whatever that lived in the area that the species was in. You named um, a what? A hopla... It's called Hopladeculus Tohu. What it's, is it? What it's a gecko. Oh, wow. So yeah. oh, it's a New Zealand yeah. gecko. Which wow. is the odds of that happening. Oh my crazy. god, you must have been sitting there the whole show going, I oh, just need to fucking say oh this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna wait till the end, I wasn't gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's incredible. That's so wait, cool. so what so you found a new species of gecko? Or a very old species of gecko. Yeah, it's it's always been there, but no one knew it. <laughs> no yeah. one knew it existed. That's but amazing. Yeah, using DNA stuff, we found it. So That's weird. Brilliant. I got a message just today from someone saying because we did a fact about stick insects on a previous fish episode. It's just gone out. Um, it's this week's episode, isn't it? Yeah. With John Lloyd, John Lloyd, uh, creator of QI and and uh, you know Black Adder and Spitting Image. I think he's here. John, are you here? John. Woo. Is he here? Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's our founder. Hi, right, John. Black Adder, Spitting Image, not the nine o'clock news. Guy's a legend. Um, so we, we, did, we did this fact, and it said, someone messaged me saying, just in case you're not completely st sick of stick insects, check out the Lord Howe Island uh, Fasmid? 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 Yeah. Um, Fasmid, yeah. And then she wrote, full disclosure, it was my dad who found it when he went climbing Bull's Pyramid with Dick Smith. <laughs> Balls and dick Ooh. found a new stick. That's the, yeah. Love it. That's wonderful. Oh, thank you very much, Lockie. That's brilliant. Um, are we going to do some more? Yeah, one or two more. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so we'll have to be really quick, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. quick. Uh, someone messaged saying, um, what is the one disgusting fact that you've learned that you wish you'd never learned? Hmm. Oh, there's a frog called the horror frog. Oh, no, there's a frog, there's a frog fertility thing. It's really horrible. Uh, <laughs> We were in Wales when we f when we did it on the show. It was in Cardiff in the Glee Club, and the audience physically just re were all repulsed by. I I can't remember the details of the fact now. So if you go back 300 episodes and listen to that, <laughs> you're welcome. Have you got one? I've got one. I've got one. Go on, there are orangutan brothels. <laughs> oh, no. There, there are no. where. No. What do you want me not just to no, say? Just it? Just no, just say it's it. awful. No, no, no. I'll tell you how I found this out though, because the story is quite funny. I was filming. <laughs> Okay, I was filming Death in Paradise. I really didn't want to go, really didn't want to go. I was like, I don't like this show. My agent went, if you don't do this show, I turned it down three times. Because <laughs> if you don't do it, I'm going to drop you because you just don't want to be on telly. So I, I, it wasn't you want to be hosting dog award ceremonies. <laughs> That's yeah. your thing. So I, I got on the, it was only when I got on the plane. I went, oh, actually, I'm going to the Caribbean for 10 days. It's not that bad. And I got out there and I had a really great time. Had the most amazing cast, a brilliant gang of renegades and um, one of the people Francis had a he was telling us about a house he had in Borneo and he said oh you know the it was a very small house and there, there were a, a, a reed roof and snakes used to fall in when it rained and I said oh that's awful I couldn't handle that I couldn't handle that he said it wasn't the worst thing though the worst thing was the um, sex tourists going through the jungle to have sex with the orangutans and I was like no oh. way we said the orangutans are threatened, and I said, uh, "Oh, because people are because of the logging." And he went, "No, because of the sex tourists going in and having sex with them." I said, "Oh, that's awful." And Nick Moran from uh, for, uh, what's it called? You know the um, Lockstock. He he said, "Oh, he said, oh, that's disgusting." He said, oh, "They have sex with the orangutans." He said, "I wouldn't fuck a ginger human." He said, <laughs> 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 "Like, like the problem." Like the problem was that the orangutan was <laughs> orange. <laughs> sorry, Andy, I know your parents are in. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Andy's mum and dad. Oh my God. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Well, once again, Sally has brought us to the end of the show. Thank you so much, everyone. Loved it. Thank you. Have a good night.